In this video, we're going to talk about how to project one vector onto another vector. At the tail end of this video, we'll talk about some applications and why we might want to do this, but the bulk of this video is simply going to be um, what does it mean to project a vector onto another vector and how do you do it pencil and paper formula wise. So, so here's the, the basic idea. Um, if you have a vector u and you have a vector v and you want to project u onto v, think of it almost like a almost like a shadow, so to speak. Meaning if, if v was the ground, and v is not always going to be horizontal, but let's let's you know assume that it is for just for this example, if if there was a, a light right here, do you notice how there would be a shadow that u leaves on v? So if you projected u onto v, it would wind up looking something kind of like this. Let me get rid of all these purple lines. Uh, it looks something kind of like this. Uh, do you see the green vector? The green vector is what we call a projection. You're projecting u onto vector v. Notice that would be very different than projecting v onto u. So this green line, this green vector is the guy we're going to try to find. And there's a formula for it that I'm going to give you right now. Uh, the first thing that I notice about the green projection vector is that it's in the same direction as V since it was projected onto V, which means it's simply going to be some scalar multiple of vector V. I didn't need anybody's help to determine that much. Uh, it's going to be either shorter or longer than V, uh, depending on how long U is. Uh, now, the, the, what the scalar is is a little less intuitive. Um, let me give it to you. It's u dot v divided by the magnitude of v squared. And so you might want to jot this formula down and commit it to memory, but this is your formula for a projection, projecting one vector onto another vector. So uh, notice the dot product is a scalar and the norm is a scalar. So a scalar divided by a scalar is another scalar. And so you're going to scale V by a certain amount. And this happens to be just the right amount to give you this green vector right here. And again, let me reiterate, we'll talk about why this is important towards the end of this video. All right. Um, let me reorient this picture here and let's see if you can find what just what the projection would look like. So here's U, here's V. I've kind of flipped them all around because they're not always going to be pretty and nice and flat and that sort of thing. Can you visualize what, what the projection of U onto V would look like? So in your mind, here's what you do. You, you either tilt your head or you think, you think of V as being the ground and then think of there being like a sun at 12 o'clock noon shining directly onto the ground. So, so here's the sun is shining onto the ground because the, the ground is, is kind of tilted this way. And, and I think I can see it. Uh, this guy would leave a shadow, something kind of like this. So here, this green vector that I'm drawing right here, that would be the projection of you onto V. Now notice in this example, the projection is longer than V and that's okay. Uh, in the other example, the projection was shorter than V. But nevertheless, it's going to be some scalar multiple of V. So hopefully you got the same vector that I did here. All right, now that's all well and good, but like what might this possibly be used for? Well, let's close out this video just talking about a, uh, just a, a very common example that uses projections. Um, a lot of these examples will have something, a truck, a boat, a box, a something sitting on a hill. Now, obviously, due to gravity, there's a force vector that's applied to this object on the hill, and this force vector goes straight down. But a very common question that we see a, a lot dealing with these projections is, how much force would be required to hold this box up on the hill? So if this, you know, if this box on the wheels weighed 200 pounds, 
it obviously wouldn't take 200 pounds to hold it up on the hill because the hill's helping you a little bit. The steeper the hill, yeah, the harder it would be. But um, the flatter the angle, the easier it'll be. So what's happening is this force vector, if you project it onto the hill, like if you have a vector here that's uh, in the same slope as the hill, then you're just getting part of the force. Um, so notice however long this vector is, that's how much force you're going to have to apply in the other direction to hold it onto the hill. Um, so I, I know this isn't an animated picture, but just imagine, for example, if this hill was flat, then the projection would be nothing, right? There would be no shadow, there would be no projection, and it wouldn't take any force to hold it on the hill because there's no hill and it's not trying to, to roll anywhere. But as this thing gets steeper, as this hill gets steeper, this projection vector, if you project F onto the hill, is going to get longer and longer and longer, which means it's going to be harder and harder to balance that force by, by pushing against it. So we'll, we'll do an example of one of these in our upcoming videos. But um, in the next couple of videos, what you can expect to see is we'll do an algebra example of doing a projection. This was kind of more of a theory video. And then we'll do one of these more involved application examples.